Report County Election Board meetings of order. If we could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. No closer. Kathy, could you please call the roll? Uh, sure. Nelson Picardo? Present. Chuck Watterson? Present. Kathy Kovac? Uh, present. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. We do not have those ready from our last meeting, so we're going, I will seek a motion to table that for the next meeting. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 There's no old business to address at this time. Under new business, the first uh, item is to consider a motion to reconsider two additional early voting locations. Uh, we've had a lot of discussion regarding this. Uh, that's why I have placed the item of public comment at the end. Uh, we have had two meetings regarding all of this, so we know the concerns, we understand the issues, and uh, we are wanting now to consider a motion to reconsider those two additional early voting locations, and I'll open it up to the board. Okay, I would make that motion to reconsider these two additional. One, one second, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Watterson. Under the under Robert's rules, because we, you and I, were the individuals who voted for that motion to reconsider, must come from the nay vote, which was Ms. Krobach. So, uh, at this time, I'm just going to open it to any board comments, and then if there's a motion to be made, we'll wait for that. I think I've addressed all of my comments regarding the matter. I think it's a great idea. I think there, there needs to be additional early voting locations for a number of reasons that we've touched on for quite some time. And I'm glad that we have this on the agenda today to reconsider. Uh, there's a lot of you here, and I know all of you are in support of this. Uh, so we're trying to get this done for you all for, as the voters of LaPorte County. It needs to be done, in my opinion, and I'm glad that we're here to reconsider this. Um, I mimic the comments Mr. Bichardo made on uh, this issue. It's a, something that should have been done at the last meeting. Um, I'm just glad that we're able to call this meeting to potentially reconsider it now and get it done. Um, it should be done, and that's all I got. Okay, and I would like to uh, make a statement, please. Absolutely, yes, Mr. Bichardo. Um, as stated at the last meeting, adding two additional early vote locations at this late date requires a tremendous amount of work and could compromise other, the other two early voting locations. It's easy for folks to sit back and dictate their ideas on how county elections should be handled, especially when the workings of what goes on behind the scenes is not widely known by those making the suggestions. Unless you have worked in the early voting locations, you would not know this. As a clerk, I don't feel adding one or two additional voting locations is fair to all of the voters of Laporte County. It is my responsibility as clerk to make sure all of the voters of Laporte County are afforded the same courtesy as South County. Using the reason of travel distance to Laporte or Michigan City also applies to other small communities in Laporte County, such as Fish Lake or Kingston Heights. The idea of vote center locations is not a new idea. Back in 2017, I made a presentation to the county commission to consider establishing vote centers, which my predecessor also presented to the county commission. However, the idea was shut down because of the cost. It is no secret that I plan to approach the Commission next year to consider this very same request. In taking in all the factors, I considered my previous vote and will consider supporting the initiative of this year and this year only on the conditions as follows. The board receive a commitment from both the county commission and the county council supporting the conversion to vote centers and electronic poll books next year for the 2021 election year. In my discussions with MicroVote several months ago, 
Michael Doan agreed to appear before the commission again and to make that presentation. Two, in addition, I will need IT support at my disposal, someone available in South County and in Cool Spring when needed to address any issues that will occur, and they will occur, with the understanding that this or any of the locations could be down for any length of time as operational issues are addressed and restored. Manning four early voting locations and it's impossible for one person to handle. I will need a representative of my office who is familiar with the microvote procedures and the early voting processes working in close communication with me every step of the way. Four, I will need keys to the facilities with access before and after hours, working restrooms, amenities such as computers, printers, scanners, copiers, secure internet service, kitchen facilities with microwave, coffee station, refrigerators, and tables and chairs. These are the conditions that I'm requesting, and unless those are followed and met, I, I can't approve it. We have people that work in these facilities for four weeks, and they cannot leave, and they need the amenities so that they can stay there and work throughout the day. Ms. Kovac, I appreciate your comments, and I and I understand what, what you're what you're saying. I, I think we have the support of a lot of individuals, including the commissioners and the council. I think that's been clearly stated, and those requests that you are making, I think, would be is are ones that we are able to address. I know uh, Ms. Hales here who's, who's indicated that she's willing to do anything that she needs to do in regards to the technology aspect of those locations. Uh, I know the commissioners have have stated that they are willing to uh, look at additional uh, uh, hires that need to be you know, done in order to be able to get this done. Uh, also, the council has, has um, indicated that you know proper funding could be looked at as for additional positions as well. And again, I think we have to remember, I, I believe some of these things can be covered through the CARES Act. Uh, obviously, adding additional early voting locations is, is important because of the pandemic we're in to keep people safe so that we're not over, overcrowding precinct locations later on. Uh, so uh, those are my comments regarding what you, your statement that you read. I think we are able to get it done. I think we have the, the two main hurdles that I continue to harp on is the locations, which we have, and the technology, the computers and secure uh, Wi-Fi. I, I think those two things are the, the basis to where all of this happens. Everything else we'll get there. And we have a little bit of time to get it done. So, I, I, again, I'm in favor of it. I think we could get those those things that you requested done. Uh, and uh, I look forward to working as soon as we get out of this meeting to get those items addressed. Uh, secondly, as, as far as your requests to review potential vote centers, that's on the agenda as well. And uh, my comment Regarding that is that I think we, we have the support. I know we have the support of both the commission and the council. And uh, I plan on reading a letter that they have prepared for us, the election board members, under that agenda item. Mr. Larson? Yeah, um, I mean, the locations and technology that's already been promised. Um, commissions has assured us that that's their technology. IT has assured us that they're going to be available and have someone dedicated to these sites. As for the other earmarks, I was unaware there was going to be conditions attached to this motion um, to reconsider, but I think, I mean, this needs to get done. It's that important that, you know, things like a microwave or coffee, I mean, that's going to be minuscule compared to what, what we can get done with these voting centers. So um, I'm, I'm in favor of, of doing what we have to do to get these voting centers open. Any other comments? Ms. Kovac, do you have a motion? Um, yes. And just to bring you up to speed, this would all be taking place next week. So um, I make a motion to reconsider the two additional early vote locations in uh, Wontaw, South County, and Cool Spring. Is your motion to add those locations as early voting locations? Did I say that? Yes, early voting locations. 
That's the motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, we now have two additional early voting locations at Wanata Town Hall and the Full Spring And again, we will work diligently to get these things resolved uh, this, this week. It's going to take a lot, but it needs to be done. Accessibility to voters is our number one priority. And as you have seen here today, we've come back, we've reconvened, we have reconsidered this in its past. So I encourage you all to understand that we're listening to whatever you all are suggesting and we're working towards it. It may not be uh, a smooth, easy ride. There may be some bumps in the road, but we're getting it done. Uh, with that said, uh, I'm glad that we that we were able to add the two early voting locations and now we'll move on to the second item under new business, which is authorized full review of potential vote centers for a full study of merits during non-election year of 2021. Uh, that specifically is what Ms. Proback was addressing. Uh, she has uh, in indicated and it's her belief that vote centers would be the ideal way to move forward in, in future elections. And uh, I certainly am one that's in favor of studying the, the process for vote centers. It's, it's uh, a a route that many counties take, and I think it's it's interesting that um, we may be able to also go that route. And I think we do need to study it. We need to be um, we need to be properly prepared and understand what all of that entails. I know there's been presentations in the past about it, and I know it's been presented to the commissioners. Um, I think it's absolutely something that we need to look at, and that. Uh, it needs to probably be done as soon as possible. Uh, Ms. Provac, do you want to explain a little bit about what voting centers are in case someone doesn't know? Um, basically, and I don't know how many uh, would be authorized in Laporte County, but we're a big county, so you would set up um, a center in an area in the county and depending upon how our population is set in an area so that everybody in the county can go to any location and vote. Now, it doesn't matter which one you go to, you're able to vote in any location. The electronic poll books will allow you to go in and sign in. It would alleviate duplication of people that are trying to vote on election day because it would already show that you had done so. Um, and it would have to be in a large area, gymnasium, uh, hall, someplace that would be able to accommodate a larger group of people. Um, but that's basically, I don't know how many LaFort County would uh, authorize. It depends on the population. but And they would be uh, strategically set across the county so everybody would be close to one. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Watterson, any comment on that? Sorry, all for a study on the potential for voting centers. Um, I mean, it, we do need to kind of get with the times, follow what some of the other counties are doing with the poll books, and, and these voting centers could be a great idea, but a study never heard anything, so um, I'm in full support of that. Thank you, Mr. Watterson. I'm going to now read a letter that's been sent to us by the commission president and council president in regards to this specific topic. It says, uh, this is dated September 22nd, 2020. Uh, Dear election board members, as president of both the county commission and county council, we were heartened to read that your board would reconsider the addition of two additional early voting sites for this election, namely the one at Todd Town Hall serving those in south central portions of our county and also the former LaPorte County Public Library located at 400 North and Johnson Road to serve those in north central portions of, of our county. We commend all of you for your consideration of additional early voting sites since as the county with the second largest land mass in Indiana, it is important to have two additional locations in addition to the two you previously authorized. Please be assured that we have communicated with the county auditor and believe funds will be made available to assist in providing cleaning and sanitizing of both premises as well as funds made available for laptops and secure Wi-Fi at both locations as well as paying for any additional IT staff or other others needed to maintain operation during the one month early voting period. Furthermore, please know that we both support and encourage the study your board will be making in 2021, a non-election year, of a potential conversion to voting centers in 2022 and beyond. 
while we cannot commit to those costs of such conversion to electronic poll books required to run vote centers without the approval of our colleagues, we can commit to a full, robust study of vote centers whose time for adoption may well have come for our county. We will participate with interest in any study you conduct. Thank you all again for your service to our county and to our voters. Regards, uh, Pre Commission President Sheila Matias, LaPorte County Commission, and President Randy Novak, LaPorte County Council. So uh, with that said, I believe we have the full support to move forward with studying this uh, potential vote center as has been, has been the recommendation by our clerk. Uh, I would entertain a motion to authorize a full review of uh, potential vote centers. So moved. Second. Uh, Alan Trevor say aye. 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 Okay. At this time uh, on our agenda, we have public comments. We have... Uh, spoken extensively about these uh, issues regarding the uh, additional early voting locations. So I ask that you limit your comments to, to two minutes, uh, and I'll open the floor up now to the public. I am uh, Lee Morris. I'm 424 uh, Upper Shore Drive here in the port. I'm a co-convener for a, a group called the Better Government Study Group, and it is a not for not not an organization, it is an assembly of interested citizens. We put together a strategy group to help and support, to be a partner to the Board of Elections and anybody else involved with the elections process to help assure that we have a safe, secure, and timely election outcome. The, the real message of the group is that we're going to put aside all partisan considerations and work with the Board of Elections and others to identify and help address any potential or actual problem or issue that might undermine the safety, security, and timeliness of election results for the Port County. I provided to, I think, everybody a, a copy of the uh, one-page summary that we put together. We have some immediate priorities, and then we have some action steps. So in the interest of time, I'll just hit the action steps. Number one, congratulations and thank you for your decision to approve the Early Voting Center in South County. Number two, we've suggested four areas where specific deadlines are really critical, and we hope you'll find a way to publicize those deadlines and where we stand in terms of meeting them. And if there are problems in meeting them, that those are identified and addressed. Secondly, we suggest that you create a forward-facing portal on the LaPorte County website to provide a daily update regarding the number of absentee ballots requested, the number approved, and the number of ballots that were sent in response. So it's a daily tally on the Port County website. Everybody is informed and comfortable with the fact that things are moving as they should. Number four, we've suggested that if we don't have them, setting target dates for five different areas, designated and approving polling sites, determining the number of early voting teams needed for expeditious counting of absentee ballots, ways to expedite that counting, and the time frame for initiating the county. And we start earlier, for example. Number three, to assure that any irregularities or errors in the ballot have been identified and resolved. Number four, organize and schedule the availability of travel boards and publicize that so people are aware. And number five, making corrections where possible in the erroneous voters' precinct assignments and the precinct maps we're using and communicate those changes to those who are affected by the changes. And finally, we suggest establishing a log sheet. Maybe you already have one. We just weren't aware of it. Where we document all the problems and irregularities that arise during the course of the election. And we provided to the election Board of Elections a, a template to use in that regard. And that way we'll have a record of every problem that's arisen and a way to identify ways to improve it before the next election occurs. So we want to be your partners. We're not agitators. We're not anti-anybody. But we appreciate the opportunity to work with you to help make sure we really have safe, secure, and timely election results in LaPorte County. And thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Mr. Morris. We will review those and, and speak to you regarding those recommendations. Any other public comment? Hi, I'm Catherine McDonald. I'm here in LaPorte. And um, I'm in a group, and we have a question. Um, 
what is your what is the Board of Elections doing to make sure that people in county jails who are not convicted or waiting for trial can vote? Well, ma'am, this isn't a question and answer time. Uh, if, okay, but you can... You look, we can look into that and we can get your information and contact you directly. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I'm sorry, did you sign on the sheet? No, no. I will. Thank you. Rodney McCormick, 617 Union Street, Michigan City. So, like, I'm the only one from Michigan City up here, for, but for the last three years, I've been trying to get early voting in a lot of places. Um, thank you for doing it in South County and the Center Township, but it seems I'm, I'm just upset that the uh, commissioners and the council, they spend money, you, you know, do everything, but we have problems in Michigan City. We've been trying to handle this for the last three years, and nothing's, nothing's this done. It's election time. we got a couple of people that want to keep their seats, so they're making all kinds of promises, doing things, and it's not right. We need to make voting easier for everyone. And everyone on the, over here and everyone from Michigan City, we all need to come together. And we need to stop all this, this nonsense because voting is bad in Michigan City. It probably is in South County. If you don't have no place to go, you got to drive all the way up here. The only solution I see to all of this, and this goes for everybody and everybody that's listening to me, we need to vote everybody that's incumbents, throw them out of office. We gotta get them out. It's time for a change. If we want change, we want our elections to be better. It's obvious the group that's in office don't want to do anything to help us. Only when it's able to get votes for them, that's the only reason why they stand today. We gotta stay together. Black, white, all of us. We gotta stay together. LaPorte, Michigan City, South County. Care where you from? If you're from anywhere in LaPorte. We got to stick together. The right to vote is for everyone, and we should protect each other's right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other public comments? Alan Stevens, uh, Hannah, Indiana. I'm president of the South County Community Coalition, and on behalf of our uh, South County Community Coalition, I'd like to thank you guys for getting it right this time. This uh, the South County Vote Center, or uh, their vote center. The South County Early Voting Center has been a long time coming. Uh, we intend to publicize it as much as we can to make sure you know our community uses it and it's a it, it's a good use of taxpayer dollars. Uh, and if there's any way we can be of any help uh, for, with the South County Voting Site in Wanata, uh please feel free to reach out to us. I'd like to thank the uh, 54 elected officials that uh, signed on to our letter of support for this. This is probably one of the one of the broadest bipartisan things I've seen in the Port County in a long time. And I just think if we could all work together like we did from both sides of the aisle in getting these two additional vote centers, uh, I think things would go a lot better in the future. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Earl Cunningham, 6311 West Sheila Drive, Port Indiana. It's actually in the Michigan City Area School District, though, so the address is deceptive. Um, I'd like to start with three thank yous and then one suggestion. Thank you, first of all, to Mr. Watterson, who attended a meeting of the Better Government Study Group about a month ago, approximately. A thank you to Mr. Pichardo for the eloquent, uh, very, very detailed address you gave to the commissioners, and a thank you to the board as a whole for their reconsidering and getting this right. My only suggestion would be that when we're considering vote centers, we think in terms of uh, what Porter County is doing with a vote mobile. I don't think we have to have six or eight or ten centers open all the time. If we communicated properly and had a vote mobile moving around just like a book mobile, People knew that on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday would be at this location and Tuesday and Thursday here. And then change those sites. I think that would be a much cheaper solution and much more convenient. But you could then go to King's Rights or Face Lake. Or it looks to me like we could almost go to every community and make early voting possible for everybody. Thank you very much for your time and your reconsideration. Thank you, sir.
Uh, my name is Jeremy Smith. I'm 702 with North 875 East in Mill Creek. Um, it's about as far east as what you can get in the county and still be here. Um, thank you for the early voting locations. We, uh, we need to do, like Rodney said, we need to make it easier to vote for everybody, um, not harder. You know, I, I find myself on all areas of the county, and if I don't get my early voting done, I have to run back to Mill Creek, and that's a hassle. Um, another thing I'd like to mention, I hear bipartisan a lot. Um, I'm a libertarian, and there's quite a few libertarians and independent voters in LaPorte County. You know, we need to work to make sure their vote or their voices are heard also. You know, there's, there's a lot of people that probably are getting excluded from conversations that need that. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Mitch Pikers, 1328 Lakeside Street, Fort, and I'm the chairman of the Port County Republican Party. First, I'd like to thank you all for the hard work you're doing to make sure that this year's election is run properly. Um, as the party chairman, I know what you three are doing behind the scenes to make sure that this election runs properly. As you know, I, I've given my, uh, as the state calls it, nominations to fill positions and remind that the state law says shall appoint. I nominate and the election board shall uh, appoint. So it's my decision on what names work and what people work in the, in the, on the election board and uh, ballot counters and so forth. We've given extra names this year for that so that, you know, people call off or get sick or whatever. Um, we want to make sure that that process runs smoothly. And the Republican Party is here to help you uh, in any way we can because it's the bipartisan oversight of the elections that makes it work. Um, also on vote centers, for the last couple of years, I have sent a couple letters to the election board supporting the use of vote centers uh, in, in the electronic poll books. We know that there's an initial cost on this. However, if you, you know, I've contacted Connie Lawson, the Secretary of State. She shows that how over time it's a cost savings. And she's more than willing to uh, have her staff come up here and explain it to everyone and give presentations about uh, vote centers and how they work in the counties uh, in Indiana. And it's been very, very useful. So. Again, we're behind you 100% to look at this and try to make it happen. And um, we appreciate all that you're doing to make this election a good and fair election. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Joanna Inquist. I am co-president of League of Women Voters of LaPorte County. And I thank you for the time that I can give, uh, address you this afternoon. Um, I'm extremely pleased with the vote today. I'm just delighted that we are moving ahead. The leak often takes time supporting and making certain because people don't understand that when we say we are nonpartisan, we truly mean it. Not just bipartisan, but nonpartisan. And, and that is what I'm seeing with this plan. I definitely am. I'm delighted that people are coming together and reaching consensus. That's a word we like to use in the league. We often do not just vote on something. We reach consensus on it. Not an easy thing to do. Not at all. But needed. And I think every group can learn to do consensus if they really want to do it. And if we can do it on the local level, wouldn't it be marvelous if it moves up to other levels in our government? Uh, that's my hope. So thank you once again. I'm very interested in learning more about plans for a, uh, a, a, a voting center or voting centers. The league is open to these ideas. And uh, I'd certainly like somebody from the league on any group that you 
put together. Uh, once again, um, this is the League of Women Voters of LaPorte County. I don't pretend to know what's happening in other counties that much, but I certainly, we are devoted to this county. And thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Any other public comment? Good afternoon. Thank you for having this meeting and everybody to be here. My name is Donna Kavanaugh. I live in Long Beach, Indiana, um, home of the McMansions falling into Lake Michigan. Um, but I'm here today because of one particular reason. You're going to see these signs around the Port County. <coughs> Please take note of them. If you need one, please get in touch with me. And the reason I'm coming here today is because I was a poll worker in 2016 in Michiana Shores, Indiana. Um, and the Saturday before the Tuesday election, I voted at our LaPorte County Courthouse in Michigan City. And lo and behold, I found out after the election of the 2016 presidential election that was so squeaky, my vote didn't count. And because I'm in the media, I've covered uh, freelance for the uh, uh, presidential elections all over the country my entire adult life and locally. Um, I was shocked. And I found out, because people know me and started contacting me when I put articles in the paper, uh, that other people's vote did not count either. So I went around to our elected officials, some of whom are in this room right now, and I asked for help. I went as far as the uh, Indianapolis Ma'am, can you make sure your mic is on, please? Sorry to interrupt you. There's a button on the base, and the light should be green. Okay, yes, thank you. I should know this. I'm in the media. So um, I went to the state police and the, um, and the state election division and our local election division. I went to our county commissioners. Nothing. All I heard was, we're looking into it, Donna. That's been four years they've been looking into it. Now, the Indiana State Police expanded their investigation, because I do a lot of research.